Anyway, I ended that last video, I will call it part one of my symbol stash, on a story I, I used to call Peisty, and I would ask, I asked, starting in the early 90s, before they discontinued the 602, I used to call them and ask them about symbols and stuff. And, you know, I had found that from my, again, I always say this from my experience, because a lot of, some guys believe you, some guys know it from their own experience, other guys think it's BS, whatever. But around the time I was really, um, I'd gotten a couple of used Peisties, I ordered a, um, an 18-inch Crash, a brand new, 2002 from Thoroughbred, but I talked to the folks at Peisty, and then I'd order them through Thoroughbred. I couldn't get them directly from Peisty, you know, unless you're an endorser, I guess, or... So, um, I ordered an 18-inch Crash, an 18-inch Medium, and at the time, they had the Heavy Crash model, which they discontinued a few years later, but then they brought back a few years later, but then they discontinued again. Uh, and they might still make it again, no, I don't know. But anyway, so I bought, because what had happened was I'd read in the literature, with, and this is about Bonham, that his uh, crashes, well, you know, he played a, you know, he was such a heavy hitter, he played an 18-inch ride as a crash. You know, when you first hear that, you're like, whoa, you know. But of course, my experience growing up, a ride symbol was a big-ass heavy symbol because it was, you know, the 80s. You know, these symbol makers weren't stupid. They, for two reasons, they beat, in my opinion, beefed the symbols up because, one, they're having a lot of breakage. You know, a thinner symbol will crack easier. But also, two, a thicker symbol will all, not just not crack as easy, but also sound better in amplification. That's why they did it. So, um, but I remember reading the, the literature and seeing the old, you know, Peisty book on, you know, Bonham, an 18-inch, you know, ride as a crash. And so I was like, wow, you know, that's a heavy symbol. So I ordered a... Uh, I think what I actually did was, what did I do first? I ordered an 18-inch crash, and then a 20-inch crash from DJs. There's a place in Chicago here, DJs, if you're from Chicago, you know what I'm talking about. And those came in. I was like, wow, and they sounded great. And I was like, wow, psh, 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 and they were awesome. But I'm like, you know, Bonham played it at Ride, huh? So then what I did was, is something made me want to, something made me want to order all of them. I, but I did. I ordered a... Um, because remember, in the 2002, they didn't have Thin Crash. and th I mean, they, they do now, or they did a couple of years ago. But the original 2002s, from 71 all the way up until not that long ago, was like the thinnest you could get was a Crash model, followed by a Medium, then a Ride. Um, they didn't have a Heavy Crash originally. Um, so and anyway, so what I did was at the time, 1992, I ordered, I had the 18-inch Crash, so I ordered a 18-inch Medium, an 18-inch heavy crash, and an 18-inch ride. And those came from Thoroughbred in a big-ass 10,000-pound box, you know. God love those guys. They were great because I could, if I didn't like them, I could send them back to them. They just charged me like a 2%. The, the restocking fee wasn't all that high. And for me at the time, I thought it was well worth it to get my experience on what the deal was with Simba. So, I mean, the 18-inch ride that came, the red label, you know, probably made in 1991, was, was a sewer cap. I mean, if you crashed on it, you know, from 100 feet away, it probably sounded like psh, you know. But, I mean, through a PA, I mean, it sounded, for all practical purposes, it was a ride symbol, you know. Uh, the medium was even a bit heavier, too. Um, but I really liked the heavy crash. So I kept the heavy crash, and I sent back the uh, ride and the medium to Thoroughbred. Anyway, uh, I kept that heavy crash for a long time, of course, then I sold it. I don't know why, but I just did. So, uh... Um, so what finally ended up happening was I finally got my hands on, in the early mid, in the mid 90s, I got my hands on a drum kit that had, uh, the first black label Paris, uh, 15 inch soundage hats I'd ever seen, which I'd compare, which were thinner. Somebody else had a pair of red label ones, well at the time we didn't call them red label, we just used a regular, you know. And we'd be like, wow, these, the old ones are thinner, you know. Um, so, uh. I then on that kit there was an there was a um, there was an 18 inch medium, I think yeah an 18 inch 2002 medium, which I then compared to my 18 inch crash that I brought brand new a year or two before, and the 18 inch crash I had was heavier in weight. The red label 18 inch crash model, the thinnest offered, you know, was heavier than the probably 1974 I think it was a 74 ish medium. Do you know what I'm saying? So as the years went on, they beefed up all the lines. So then there were some symbols I found, like um, like now, you know, it's somewhere here. Somewhere here I have an 18-inch black label ride, which is like in mint condition. And that is just a little, that is about, if I remember, the rides, as a general rule of thumb, what I had found, more or less, 
is that a medium was more or less a, uh, to the mo then modern Pisces standards, an 18 inch medium uh, black label was more or less like an 18 inch red label crash by and large. So it's almost like everything went up a notch, you know what I mean? Like a, then a, you know, an 18 inch black label medium was more or less like a red label crash. An 18 inch black label ride was then like a red label medium. But I do know that the 18 inch, later I did find, um, I didn't buy it, somebody I knew had it, an 18 inch, might have been a 20 because at the time, I had a 20 inch crash, I think I took my 20 inch crash, and the 20 inch crash was just a little thinner than the 20 inch black label ride. Anyway, neither here nor there. You get the gist. Let me move on because I'll yap forever. This is a Tosco, well, Italian made. Uh, they made, they, they call these rotocast. In Italy, I guess they're really fond of like rotocasting symbols, which I guess they'd have some sort of a mold which they pour molten bronze into, and it would actually literally spin. The idea being kind of like when guys use, it sounds terrible, but guys use, they, in concrete they use like vibrators and cement. When they pour cement, sometimes they take big metal things that go like, brrr, so they get all the bubbles out. And apparently too, uh, I guess the, the rotocasting thing was supposedly made the metal uh, I don't know, the molecules stick together better or something. I'm sure there was some practical reason back in Italy they did. It was somehow easier. Um, but this is a 12-inch medium Tosco. And... Well, I mean, I should... I, it's not really a Tosco. It just is made in Italy. Well, it's a UFIP. And apparently what happened was, if you read all your symbol books, apparently what happened was, is all, there were a bunch of Italian symbol makers, pretty much all made symbols the same way. They, somebody either bought a lot of them up or whatever, and they called it UFIP, which was United Federation of Italian Producing Symbols or something. But anyway, the, the, the spun, and they're B20 alloy. The B20 alloy symbols, the Italian ones, are, are they, they sound different than Zildjian's and Sabian's. I mean, they have a different sound to them. And I don't know if that's from the lathing or the shape or the rotocasting or whatever. Some of the best sounding hi-hats I've ever heard, B20 hi-hats, were UFIPs or Toscos or Cashins. All those were Italian-made rotocasts, but the Cashins, I think, were sold as Slingerland and I think Pasha was to Gretsch. But they were, all, they were all pretty much the same symbol. But, with, but some of the best sounding hi-hats I've ever heard are, are the Italian-made rotocast symbols. In fact, my theory is... Is, I'm a Stuart Copeland fan, too. Um, and I talked to Jeff Seitz. He's the uh, tech for Copeland. And in a period of time before the police got popular again, or before they reunited and everything, you could, like, call up Jeff Seitz. If you looked at his website, his freaking phone number's on there. I'd call him and I'd talk to the guy. Super nice guy. Um, he, I think he, 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 had, he said that, you know, of course he went to... Copeland was one of those guys that played both. You know, he'd just go out and buy Pisces and Zildjian's and whatever and just play them. But, of course, he got the Pisces endorsement, so he played Pisces, you know. Um, and, of course, he then played, you know, a 13-inch pair of heavy or extra. I think it was just heavy 602 hats. But, uh, you know, if you look at old pictures of, of Copeland, those guys, of, of the police playing, you can see him playing Zildjian's, regular Zildjian's. And I even remember a picture in um, the October 1982 Modern Drummer where Copeland's sitting behind his drums for the Ghost and Machine Tour, and the two splashes in front of him, I, I swear, are Zildjian. I mean, that's not earth shattering, whatever. You know, he likes them. I'm sure the Pisces folks don't care, whatever. But the point I mean is, is that one of the, as far as it goes with uh, Copeland related to the UFIPs, is that one of the coolest sounding um, Copeland's cymbal sound on the first three records, up until Zenyatta Mandata, the hi hat and the ride had a very particular sound because it was the same cymbals. You can see him play them. When you look at like, Rock Goes to College and stuff from 79, uh, you can see him. He played the same ride, well, definitely the same ride for like three years because you can see. On the bottom of the symbol, I think that there was a stenciled Zildjian. And it looks like he took the Z and colored it in and made like a design around it. Because over the years, I know this is such a <laughs> symbol geeky, music Copeland geeky thing. But underneath his ride symbol, you'd see like, uh, it looked like a logo that I think he took a marker or something and used to ask around with it. You might have filled in the Z and then after a while, you can see, if you look at the pictures, you'll see, look at old pictures of Copeland. You can see what looks to be like a Z or some sort of thing under the symbol. And he played always the exact same symbol. You can totally hear that symbol sound on like "Don't Stand So Close to Me" and the stuff off "Regatta Block." But most importantly, and I think that symbol personally was a Zildjian because of the, I think it was a twenty, it was a twenty-one according to Sites. And I think, in my opinion, uh, I think Sites said it was a um, with Zildjian they used to have a symbol called a twenty-one rock. Um, 
And then later, slightly later, they came out with the Rock Ride. So a 20, you could get the Rock Ride, a 20 and a 21 inch size. But there was a period of time where the original model was a 21 inch rock. It's a 21 rock that was like the thing. It said it on there. I think that was the symbol that Copeland used. Uh, maybe not, but I, um, I did get my hands on a 21 inch rock ride. It wasn't a 21 inch rock, but it was a rock ride. And it sounded, I, I don't know why I ever got rid of it. I had it in about 2000 to 2002. And it, was, it sounded almost, honestly, exactly like Copeland's uh, ride symbol from the early era, which was great. But anyway, back to the UFIPs. The hats. I think that Copeland's original hats that he played, uh, like on, uh, like Walking on the Moon and through, like, um, uh, Zignana Mandata, you know, Don't Stand So Close to Me and stuff, I'm almost certain they're, they're, uh, they're UFIPs. I have a pair of 13-inch UFIPs around here that I bought on eBay that are beautiful. Um... Actually, I think they're top, well, they're Italian made. This isn't them. This is another one I bought. Now, this is made in, this is a Tosco made in Canada by Sabian. Sabian bought the rights to Tosco, made a bunch of cheaper symbols with the Tosco name. Um, oh, I understand they're cheaper. I mean, they don't suck. This is a 14, although I think it's really honestly like a 14 and like, a 13 and like half. And, you know, some of those Italian symbols were slightly, like the 13... Symbols I have, the, uh, they're either, I can't remember, the UFIPs or Tosco, original Tosco, made in Italy Tosco. I think they're like 13 and a quarter, so they're a little bigger than 13. But those things sound exactly like Walking on the Moon. You listen to Walking on the Moon, they sound exactly like that. And for the love of God, I don't know why where, <laughs> where they are. Uh, but I have them here. Anyway, I'm, I do it more. Anyway, all right, Tosco, Sabian Tosco. I don't even know why I had that. I think I bought it just because I wanted to. Sometimes I'll just buy stuff. If I see something I've always been curious about, or don't know about, I'll buy it on eBay, or I'll buy it, hopefully used. I had to buy those Pisces back in 92 new, because, you know. But most of the time I'll just buy used stuff, because I know if I get a good deal on it, I'll just be able to flip it. You know, I'll be like, you know, just sell it for what I paid for it. And, but then you got a first-hand chance to check it out. People just talk about, oh, a birch snare is darker. Well, go buy one, check it out yourself, and see what you think, you know. Anyway, and then this is the Italian U fit. And uh, here is a Pisces. This, I was telling you before, my hi-hats are alpha. I have an alpha top. This is the other alpha. Because they come in pairs. Uh, you get an A and a B in the march, like in the marching. So these are, this is an A as a top. If I remember, the A's are thinner and the B's are heavier. So I, I bought two pair. So I have four of these. Here's the first A. This is the second A. The two B's are floating around here for the love of God. Oh, here. <laughs> this is. Here it is. It's right here. 18 inch. Uh, 2002 ride. Okay, back to my. You know, I gotta tell you, I, I I am mental. Back to my story. Thoroughbred music. Blah blah blah. I got the 18 inch crash. 18 inch heavy. Blah blah blah. Sent the medium and the ride back because they were freaking sewer caps. Later on, found an 18 inch ride. That was a little late, even later. And realized, well, hey, the reason why Bonham you Bonham wanted a heavier symbol and the ride was just heavier, right? So again, like this is a, this is a, um, this is a 1974, 18 inch ride. Now I just bought this a few years ago. This isn't one I had forever. There was a period of time, some years ago, I had tons of old black label symbols, uh, 2002s. Well, not a lot. And I really did used to buy, and I and I didn't. I should have written down the weight of each one. Because later on, I didn't realize, sometimes I'd tell people, I'd say, listen, you know, guys, the older Pisces are a little thinner. And people, some people are like, no way, they're the exact same. And I just wish I'd kept, um, you know, the exact weights. You know, I, there were some that I did, but I wrote it down somewhere, and I don't know what the hell it is. But Now, this symbol, to me, is a little, if you buy an 18-inch medium, today from Peisty, it would be about the same weight. Okay. Uh, on the original 2002s, from my experience, up until about 74, the bell, you'll see, look at how flat that profile is. But see how small that bell is? The original, and, and 2002s have smaller bells anyway. That's part of the sound. But the original 2002s had like freaking teeny bells. I mean, that's like a mini cup zildjian bell. Anyway. It's a great symbol. I can't believe I, there it is. I didn't even know it was sitting right next to me. So let me put these back. Uh wherever the heck I got them from. And then, uh, uh, where the heck did I get them? Oh, oh, here we go. Well, I got them from here. Of course, there's some symbols under here. All right, so here's some more symbols that I have. I have so many symbols, I don't know what to do. I got this on eBay. This is kind of cool. 
This is a Peisty uh, prototype, 13-inch high-head bottom. I don't know, I think it was like 50 bucks or something. I just had to have it, you know. So, of course, it being a prototype, you know that it was a 20 series that they were working on. If you look at it, it looks just like a 20 series. Certainly not a 602. Um, so this is cool because I was going to throw this, maybe put the thinner Tosco on top or the one I have. This Tosco I have here, which, of course, says 14, and it is a bigger. But this is a 13, so I was going to put this with the 13-inch. Uh, I can't remember if the Toscos are U-fibs, because um, I'm sure it would sound great, because it is B20. Uh, here's a Peisty. Ah, this is cool. People, if, if there was a period of time when Peisty had 10 jillion lines. They had the, they had the frickin' 101s uh, 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 that they sold in Europe, and they had like the, you know, they came out the 502s and the 502 pluses, and then the, of course uh, they got rid of the 602s before that, and then they had the 802s and the frickin', you know, the 402s which were nickel silver and the 302s which were brass. Anyway, this is a pair of 13 inch 802s. I got really cheap on it, well for like 60 or 70 bucks on eBay. And to me, these would be my Stuart Copeland B8 alloy copies if I was ever assing around. Um, you know, because from what I, from my experience, to me these sound identical to 2002 heavies. If not a little better. Okay? So, you know, you forget how little teeny they are to hold a pair of 13s. Uh, and then, of course, I got this at Guitar Center. It's so funny. Sometimes Guitar Center, there was a period of time when Peisty was getting rid of a lot of symbols. I got this at Guitar Center for like 60 bucks. It's a Peisty uh, alloy, Peisty series, so B12 alloy, reflector. Okay, remember I was telling you before about the 2000 series for sound reflections. Anyway, of course, they did the reflector thing with the Peisty uh, signatures as well as the sound formulas. So this is a dark, crisp bottom, 14-inch bottom hi-hat. I just had to get my hands on it. It was 40 or 50 bucks. I forget. The guy sold it to me for nothing, so I just had to have it. So I was going to fart around maybe just throw that with it. Again, it's, it's a disease, man. I'm telling you, people... You know what I'm talking about. You just, you know, you just gotta have it. You got that's only forty bucks. It's only sixty bucks. It's only a hundred bucks. It's only the next thing you know, you're up to your arse and symbols. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna have to make another. Video. Probably I don't, know, I don't even know how long this is. So that's some more symbols I have. Got okay, right. It's seventeen. Oh, uh, here's something that's kind of cool. I just bought these on eBay. I couldn't help myself. Um, I thought it was kind of cool that in the past 10 years, finally somebody at Zillow got their head out of their ass and started making, um, kind of capitalizing on the vintage thing. From their end, or from a lot of people's end in the boardroom, it's about money, whatever will sell, right? But the diehard, you know, Zillow people there are people who love symbols. You know, why not go back and try to make symbols like they did in the 50s or the 60s? Because, again, as I've always said, the 50s into the early mid 60s are the golden age of Zillow, in my opinion. Uh, the Vita Zillow. And I got this. This is a one of the guys. There's a guy, symbol dude on eBay. God, God love him. He sells all kinds of stuff. Or this store does. They're great. You know, they have great deals on stuff. And their customer service is great. I'm not affiliated with them, but I bought stuff from them, and they're awesome. But they were selling this Avita Zildjian Armand. These are the Armands. If you remember, they came out the A Zildjians and C A Zildjian and C line, which was which was there. They were like, listen, you know, we're gonna this. These are like the '60s. You know, they're thinner and they're late. You know, great symbols, which I think they discontinued. Then they might have started making. It. I, I lose track. But anyway, this is the Armand series because Armand came out like his 19-inch beautiful baby or whatever the hell it was. And I think that what they did is, um, they then I think that now they just make the Armand series. Although they might reintroduce the A Zildjian and C. Now remember though that the original A Zildjian and C wasn't. The A Zildjian and C were made in Canada. They, that's a whole other story. So, uh, the, in a certain way, the A Zildjian and C is sort of a misnomer. I think what the, what they did was because it was K Zildjian and C out of Turkey, so they come back. Well, A Zildjian and C, you know, like for the modern designation eight years ago, when the original A Zildjian and C were made in Canada. Um, at the Canada factory. And those were usually, I think, like, um, they had a really brilliant finish on them. I just saw a 26 inch version of one at the drum show. But they were Zildjian. They remember the Zildjian company. And they're good symbols, but they were a little different, the A Zildjians and C's. It wasn't just the stamp on them, they were, they were just slightly different symbols. A lot of them had, most of them, if I remember, I even forgot, had a brilliant finish. Anyway, this is a. Huh. Hmm. This is the 14. I, anyway. Uh, I bought from Symbol Dude. He had like for five twenty nine was the opening bid. You get the Armand Symbol bag, and you got a pair of fourteen inch, more or less what would be probably sixties new beads. 
a 16 inch medium crash, an 18 inch medium crash, a 21 inch ride. See, hi hats, two crashes, and a ride, right? And the bag. And then it came with the Gretsch like popcorn snare for like $5.29 shipped. I mean, that comes out to be not like, it's like buying each symbol for like 100 bucks, kind of, you know, or 120 bucks. I mean, these pair of hi hats go for like 300 bucks. That's what you pay for. Them. And. Okay, here's the top. I mean, these are they're beautiful symbols, you know. Look at this. And what they did is the bottom lathing is just like on a modern Zildjian, but the top is a lot like what you'd see on in the 1950s Zildjians into the 60s, even sometimes in the early 70s. There'd be a real tight lathing you'd see, usually on the bottom of the symbol. Um, and sometimes you'd see it in spots, like like the symbol might start out with the regular lathing, and then there might be about a two-inch period where you'll see the real tight lathing like this. And then they, and it might have been a correction. Maybe somebody didn't like the lathing, went to a different lathing machine. They just, but um, these are beautiful symbols, man. I mean, I'm impressed with these babies. I mean, I, you can't really say they're exactly like 50s or 60s, but I do know they sound good to me, which is the important thing. So let me put these babies away. So I got these. I just couldn't pass these freaking things up. You see, symbol dude selling that again. It was like a 625 buy it now, but 529 was the opening bid. I'm the only one that bid. So I have a bag of these. So I have the 16. And the 18 and the 21, which I'm going to keep forever and ever. Those, these are like the first brand new symbols I bought for a long, long time. I just, you know, most of the stuff I bought was used. All right, what else that I can throw in this quick in this next video? Now I have a few. Well, I have one, two, three. I have like I should probably make a video for each bag of symbols I have. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four, five, six. I have about six more symbol bags, which I should probably make this. Somebody asked about all my stuff, so I'll post it on. I have a lot of symbol experience, though. Re I mean, really, whether I, whether you think I'm, you agree with me or not, but I, I'm telling you, I, I've had a lot of symbols over the year. I had a thing one time on on the symbol holic site where I had mentioned somebody was talking about something. I forget what it was, some issue with symbols. I can't remember what it was, and I just chimed in my two cents. I said, well, you know, I said. And I wrote this. I did. I said, well, out of the thousand, thousands, I did say, of symbols that I've owned, uh, played, touched, you know, felt, smelled, that I've checked, that, you know, that somebody else's drum said, oh, this is a great symbol, Bob, whatever, or gone to the drum show and, you know, oh, and tap on it with your face, you know, out of all the symbols that I personally encountered for more than five seconds apiece, some I own, some I just touched, I just gave my opinion about what it was. I can't remember if it had to do with cracks or whatever, but... People, some people freaked. They were like, you know, they're like, you know, people were just like flat out, like, you know, thousands. And then I thought about it. I'm like, all right, well, you know, shit. I, I guess I by thousands, maybe they thought I meant like, you know, fifteen thousand. But I guarantee, in my life, with all the symbols that I've, I probably honestly owned, maybe, honest to God, five to six hundred symbols. And I'm talking over the past twenty five years. And there was a period of time that I did actively collect and flip stuff. Uh, maybe more, six or seven hundred. But I've also a drum, you go to a drum show, you see 40 symbols. You know, you pick up 40 symbols. I mean, you're there for five hours. You know, I mean, you, you know, so right there, if, if you've been to 20 drum shows, you know, you've seen 800 symbols at drum shows. You know, you play different people's symbols at shows, and, you know, you go to people's houses, or, you know, you go to... Anyway, all right, so maybe I've seen 2,000 symbols. So I've... <laughs> I did say the thousands. My point was I saw a shite load of symbols over the years. But i got to tell you now, I honestly think right now here at the house I could conceivably have 130 symbols, even right now. And I've sold a lot of stuff off on eBay and, and locally and stuff. Right here, here's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 symbols even right here, which are all hi-hats, which I'll make another video for. Oi. Anyway, but yeah, I, I have a lot of symbol experience. I, sh I, I wish I could get a job with Pisces and Zillers and work out of my house, but I, I guess I can't. <laughs> anyway, I'll make more symbols. I do. Anyway, I really do have a lot more symbols I do want to show, though. Different things on different Pisces and Zillers from my experience. So.